it wasn't that long after I was really woken up to the fact that nutrition played a huge role in some of the issues I was seeing in my gut health, in my sleep quality, in my injuries, the aches and pains and the inflammation and just all of the things I was dealing with. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here, and we are going to talk about my six years plus of following a carnivore diet, low carb, animal based, no veggies in over six years, um, and see how things are going at 52 years old. Hmm. Wonder what the outcome is going to be. Will I continue doing it? Am I having any issues? What will happen in my future? Is something changing? Let's find out. Before we do that, let's talk about subscribing to the channel. Make sure that uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, or even if you're not, I guess you can hit the notification bell. I'm not sure how that works. But most importantly, if there's anything in here that you hear, whether it's this video or any of the other over a thousand videos that I have on this channel, please share it. If you see, if you think there's something that you know someone else would, could could benefit from, um, let's get information out there and see how many people we can help improve the quality of lives. So a little bit of history. I have a wonderful history, personal history of having some health issues around my gut, resolving, focusing on my gut, IBS, urgent bowels, epic, let's just say eruptions of spontaneous joy. <laughs> yeah. There is a long, there's a period of my life of, of probably about eight years, six to eight years where, um, it was really bad. Um, and this, this period overlaps when I started getting healthy, when I started making changes in my life, um, my late thirties, early forties, I was making changes. I was trying to improve my fitness. I was trying to, as you know, slowly make changes in my nutrition. Um, the one constant until I made a drastic change, the one constant through all of it was urgent bowels, discomfort when I ate certain things or most things, and just the overall anxiety and stress of never knowing when I was going to have to go to the bathroom, living my life obsessed with where a bathroom was, how quickly I could get there, identifying it, doing everything to be as near to a bathroom as possible at social events, in travel, et cetera. I could not go on long car rides. You know, it's not something I'm proud of. It's something that I'm proud that I don't have to deal with. And it's a dramatic part of the story, but I don't know anybody else besides me. Um, there might be other people out there because I do get a lot of feedback that this is a big problem for a lot of people, particularly men. I get a lot of men saying I deal with the exact same thing. I have done my deed on the side of the road in multiple countries and multiple continents. It's not fun living a life where you always have to be prepared to crap your pants. I have been stuck in rush hour traffic in Boston with nowhere to go and had to crap my pants on the way to work. Have to turn around in traffic, go home, hide the fact from my wife at the time that I crap my pants, say that I forgot something, clean everything up, do whatever I had to do, change, and then go back to work, be late, obviously, but have to deal with that whole process because I couldn't, I didn't want her to know that I crapped my pants. Who, I, it's not something I want people to know that I'm over here crapping my pants at, you know, 40. Well, at the time, that was early, actually. Wow, that was even before. Holy crap. This problem went on. This was a problem long before I think I realized it was a problem. As I'm telling this story, looking at the timeline of everything in my head, running through it all, that incident happened in my late 20s, early 30s, before I got divorced, before I decided to try and get myself in shape and healthy. This has been a problem. This had been a problem for a very long time. It's crazy how you don't realize things, the timeline of things until you start thinking about stuff. This is similar to, I didn't realize for several years how much weight I had lost. I started my journey, like I said, I started really thinking about and trying to focus on getting healthy and getting in shape in my late 30s, early 40s. It wasn't until 50 
I think I was 50 years old. I was at a conference with Dr. Barry, Nurse Cindy, Kim Howerton, a bunch of other people. And we were walking to get food. And Nurse Cindy, we were commenting. She asked me about my history and my journey. And it was like, hey, yeah, I mean, I used to be this much. I, you know, I got down to this much. And she's like, wow, you lost 70 pounds. It was like, I had never done the math until that moment. Yeah, I lost 70 pounds in the process of getting healthy. So sometimes it's beneficial to look back. It's a little, little segue, little segue conversation. So major issue in my life outside of the weight gain, outside of um, when I started the process of getting healthy with workout, working out and fitness and joining a CrossFit gym and becoming a CrossFit coach and owning a CrossFit gym and seeing a lot of weight loss, but also seeing an increase in injuries and chronic pains and pulled muscles and pulled groins and pulled calves and pulled hamstrings and, and pulled the adductors and or abductors and pulled uh, torn, torn meniscus and torn labrums and just everything and not being able to recover from workouts and going from working out five days a week to going to working out two days a week and just feeling like crap and then putting the weight back on. Like all of these things happening, even though I was doing everything I possibly could to improve my health. Enter carnivore. 2018, I was a couple months, maybe even a month. It wasn't that long after I was really woken up to the fact that uh, nutrition played a huge role in some of the issues I was seeing in my gut health, in my sleep quality, in my injuries, the aches and pains and the inflammation and just all of the things I was dealing with. I did a, you guys have probably heard the story before. I did a three weeks alcohol detox. I stopped drinking alcohol for three weeks and so many things in my life improved that I could not avoid the obvious that something that I was doing was making an impact and making me feel the way I was feeling. That opened the door for me mentally for not completely shutting down carnivore at the time. People say now, how can you believe that carnivore is healthy? There's no way that you, you have to eat veggies, blah, 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 blah. Guys, I was there too. I used to think all of those same things. You cannot tell me that I have not experienced or done the research, research, research or studies and read and practiced and experienced and trial and error and experiment and N equals one, all the things to see if this is actually a good thing to do or not. Anyone that tells you that carnivore is bad who hasn't done it can't tell you that carnivore is bad. Books and studies and lab stuff isn't going to give any practical experience to what is working or not. I had been there. I was married at the time to a licensed dietitian nutritionist who gave me the worst crap of my life for making this change, even though she's the one that recommended it, right? She recommended it as a elimination diet short term to see if my gut issues would resolve 30 to 60 days. That was the idea. Let's see what happens. Maybe this will be the one thing that makes a difference. It doesn't seem like it can be that harmful for short term. See what's going on and how it goes. That was May 1st, 2018 guys. I haven't gone back since. So there is absolutely um, nothing that can be said from my experience. I don't care what scientific study anybody's done in my experience. And we'll, we can talk about in the experience of the hundreds of people that I've helped following the concepts that make the carnivore diet work. This stuff works. This stuff is sustainable. This stuff is not dangerous and it will help you resolve health issues beyond just weight loss. Personal, real life experience that I have been able to consistently repeat over and over again in many other people who have many other problems, who have many other backgrounds, a lot of different experiences, and who are going different places. The concepts behind why the carnivore diet work, folks. You cannot convince me otherwise. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. Now, 
this channel is not a carnivore channel. This is me sharing my story and my opinion of the things that I've seen work. When we talk about how I approach nutrition and fitness with my clients and with the people that I help, the principles behind the carnivore diet is what I follow. Why does the carnivore diet work? The carnivore diet works because you're eliminating crap. You're focusing on nutrient density, bioavailability, and satiety. Of course, I'm always tying that in with the fitness aspect. I'm tying that in with where are you trying to go? Do you have goals? What is your motivation? What is your why? What are the things you want? What are the things you don't want? Let's get you improved meta metabolic function through fitness and exercise and strength training and moving your body on a consistent, regular basis. All of these things come together. When you take the concepts at wherever a person's at, they you're going to see progress. You don't have to go carnivore. And that's one of the reasons I want to make this video. I want to, I decided to go carnivore for me, specifically for the IBS gut issues and urgent bowels that I was dealing with. The less plant material I put on my body, the better I feel, the less anxiety I have, and the less likely I am to crap my pants, period. That is my story. That may not be your story. Oh, anybody that tells you carnivore mm -hmm. is the best way to go isn't looking at your scenario. That may have been the best way for them and they're projecting that on you. So just ignore it. Just ignore it. It's not what it's all about. The carnivore diet, and we're talking about one last thing before I drop off here, is what you want it to be. You can be carnivore for those purists and dogmatic zealots, people who have more energy to worry about other people than themselves. The definition of a hyper carnivore is 70% of your diet from animal-based products, from meat. I don't care what group you're in on Facebook, what community you're in on the internet, anybody that gives you crap for eating a sweet potato or some Brussels sprouts or having a strawberry or blueberries every once in a while can go pound sand. If the choices that you're making from your dietary selection of food options is helping you get where you want to go, then you can tell everybody else in the world to shove it. That's all that matters. The idea of making any change that gets you closer to mostly animal-based products, no processed foods, and eliminating anything, I don't care where it comes from, that causes your body distress. The closer you can do, you can, you can get to those three things, the better off you're going to be. Now, is it coincidence that that happens to be moving towards a carnivore diet? I don't think it is. That's just how our bodies work. But that doesn't mean your carnivore has to be my carnivore or anybody else's carnivore has to be your carnivore. So keep that in mind. My experience following an animal-based I am 98% animal based. Every once in a while, I may have something. On the holidays, I'll have a cheesecake, whatever it is, however, however my mom makes it, which lately, when we go over there, she's been making it more carnivore based, right? Using carnivore products to make the cheesecake. Um, like just different things. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't eat a cheesecake or a slice of cake or a slice of pie or some ice cream or who knows what it made, some French fry. The choices that I make, nine, and a half times out of 10 are going to be meat, eggs, and butter, sometimes cheese. That's just what I eat, guys. I don't eat veggies on a regular basis, if at all. I think in the last year, I've had maybe two strawberries. That's my choice. You don't have to do that. That's how I do it. Now, what's the results? What's the impact? How am I doing? At 52 years old, I started at 46, sorry, 45. 45. I started May 1st, 2018. I'll be, I'm a, about what, almost six, six and a half years now, right? My workouts, nothing's really changed there. Everything's great. I haven't had an injury or a chronic pain since 2018. It is absolutely mind boggling how much I can do without hurting myself right now. Um, I can't even think of all the other things. My body composition, if I decide that I want to be on track and I want to lose body fat, it happens quickly because I'm focused. I know exactly what I need to do. I moderate my fat. I keep doing what I'm doing with everything else. And it just comes off. I think right now as kind of, I've been in a cutting phase. I, I lost 10 pounds in like eight weeks, like done. It's there Le about a, about a week or a, about a, a pound, a little bit more pound than a week, uh, a pound 
or more a week. It's just everything about this lifestyle is so easy. I can't explain it. If you haven't tried it, try it. Uh, I do have a guide. Um, if you go to keto-getstarted.com, I have a guide on how to get started. That's that's a, an excerpt from my last book, The Ultimate Ketogenic Fitness Book. If you go on Amazon and get that book, the entire walkthrough is there as well. I've got videos on how to get started, how to do your macros, how to figure out what to eat, what the important parts of nutrition are, all that stuff. So check it out. If you have any questions, you can join my Discord group. There's a bunch of people in there who do some level of animal-based nutrition as well as exercise and fitness. And there's a lot of experience there. You can ask questions, talk about your experience and get uh, tweaks and input on how you can make it work for you. So that's my experience. A little bit of a rant, a little bit of a brain dump, but I wanted to get it out of my head so that you guys could hopefully understand that there's nothing scary about following a carnivore or animal-based diet. It can work. Um, there is no specific guideline or rule set you have to follow in order to make it work. There's just some basic principles behind why it works that if you, if you, if you can check those boxes off, uh, you'll probably have a lot of success on the way. All right. Take it easy guys. Hope that helps. Hey there. Did you know that I have a free community on discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.